A rate is a comparison of two different quantities. In all four of these graphs, we can see that we're comparing the time in seconds to the distance a person is from the starting line in meters. The scale is the same in each one of these graphs, so visually we can make a quick comparison as to what's happening. In this case, we want to know which runner happens to be running the fastest. Well, if we take a look at graph C, the person begins 40 meters from the start line, four seconds go by, and they're still 40 meters from the start line. They didn't move. Time is passing. The distance did not change. And remember, a horizontal line has a slope of zero. So this person is not moving at all as time is passing. So they're not going to be going the fastest. If we look at A, the person begins 20 meters away from the start line and ends up 40 meters away. They changed a distance of 20 meters in four seconds. Person B, they changed a distance of 30 meters in four seconds. And in graph D, they changed a distance of 10 meters in four seconds. So in each case, Four seconds has passed, but we can see that this person has gone the fastest. They've traveled 30 meters over the course of time. So the steeper the line, the faster a person is traveling. They're covering more distance in the same amount of time. Keeping with the same example, we're comparing the distance a person is from the starting line in meters to the time in seconds. And this time we want to figure out which one of the runners began 10 meters ahead of the other. Well, in the beginning, time is zero. So we can see here the runners are 10 meters apart. Here they finish 10 meters apart. Here they're 20 meters apart at the beginning, 10 meters at the end, and in the last graph they start at the same point, they end up 10 meters apart. So they begin at time zero, 10 meters apart in graph A. Which of these graphs represents the runners running at the same speed? Well, it's not going to be A because you can see they end up at the same spot, but the person in blue started 10 meters away, the person in red started 20 meters away. So even though they end up at the same spot, this person had to run a lot faster in order to catch up. So they covered more distance in the same amount of time. In graph B, they begin at the same place, but we can see that the person in red has run 10 more meters than the person in blue. So red is steeper, red is running faster. In this graph, blue is steeper, blue is running faster. This person has covered 30 meters compared to this person covering only 10 meters from where they began. In graph D, we have parallel lines. So in four seconds, they have both covered a distance of 10 meters. The person in red went from 10 to 20 meters. The person in blue went from 20 to 30 meters. The slope of the line indicates the rate of change. Parallel lines have the same slope, so we are changing the same distance for the same amount of given time. In D, the graphs are running at the same speed. And in our last graph, which of these four statements best describes what's happening? So they all begin with the runner running forward for two seconds, so we can see two seconds have passed, the person's going forward. They're not running backward. If they were running backward, they would now switch direction and start coming back to where they began. They're not standing still. That indicates the distance won't be changing. We're going to have a horizontal line if they're not moving. They run forward more slowly. Yes, that is likely what's happening because we can see they're still going forward, but now they're in the same amount of time, not covering nearly as much distance. The slope is not as steep, so they're moving more slowly. In our last one, they turn right and continue at the same speed. They're not moving at the same speed because then the slope would be the same. So in the fourth graph, C is the statement that best represents it. We know that the slope of a graph represents the rate of change. Speed is a measure of distance compared to time. By looking at how much a line is changing in vertical distance compared to a certain amount of horizontal change, we can get the slope. Rise over run, change in y over change in x. In this case, my y axis represents distance, my x axis represents time. So I'm looking at what's the change in distance for a given amount of time. To find the slope of a line, I can use any two points along that line. They've indicated two points for us, so we're going to go with those ones. And I've just kind of indicated line A and line B to keep our calculations really clear. And remember that slope is always moving from left to right. So the point on the left is my first point. The point on my right is the second point in each of those cases. On the red line, 30 minus 10 means we've covered 20 meters, 3 minus 1 in 2 seconds. If we reduce that to get the unit rate, person A is running 10 meters per second. So we can see they're going up 10 meters in one second, up another 10 meters in another second. 
Person B, we're going a change of four meters in 1.6 seconds. When we divide that, we can see that we get a unit rate of 2.5 meters per second. Person B is going up 2.5 meters in one second and so on. In our next example, we're going to be driving across the country and you can see that this graph is comparing how many liters of gas we use to drive a certain distance in kilometers. The slope of the graph represents the rate of change. So we can see already really quickly that this line in red is gonna use more liters of gas to travel the same distance that line in blue is going. I want you to pause the video and determine what is the slope of each graph and then think about what do you think that slope represents. Similar to how on a distance time graph we know that the slope of the line represents speed. If we're comparing the number of liters of gas to the number of kilometers we've driven, that represents the vehicle's fuel efficiency. So how efficient on fuel is that car or truck? Usually we represent it as liters per 100 kilometers because you can see it uses less than one liter to drive one kilometer. So six liters per 100 kilometers compared to nine liters per 100 kilometers, we can see that to drive the same distance, this vehicle in blue is going to use less fuel. When when you look at new vehicles, they have a sticker in the window, and one of the things on that sticker is the fuel efficiency. So we can see this particular vehicle is going to use 9.9 .9 liters to drive 100 kilometers in the city, and on the highway, it's going to use on average 7.5 liters to drive 100 kilometers. So by taking the fuel efficiency for each vehicle and knowing how large the gas tank is, we can estimate how far we're going to be able to travel on one tank of gas. Again, we can set up a proportion. These two fractions are equal or equivalent to one another. Put the same unit on the same line, and then we can cross multiply. So multiply those two, divide by six, and we can see that we're gonna get awfully far on the vehicle one's tank of gas, and we're still gonna get pretty far on vehicle's two tank of gas. So which line do you think represents the car, and which line do you think represents the minivan. And then keep in mind if the family is traveling 2400 kilometers, that's an awfully far distance. Which vehicle would you prefer to take to travel in for that length of time? Justify means you need to provide a reason as to why you reached a particular conclusion. So we could conclude that because vehicle two is using more gas, it's more likely to be the larger vehicle or the minivan. The vehicle using less gas to travel the same distance is more likely the car, a little bit better on gas. Which vehicle do you think the family should take? I personally would go for the minivan. You're not as cramped, you have a little bit more space, room to pack things, you can travel with pets, get in and out a little bit more efficiently, what would you go with?